Okay, <clears throat> let's continue with the penalties. And so far as, uh, and the uh, extinction of criminal liability, and so far as civil interdiction is concerned, uh, just memorize this. Remember the consequences if a person is declared under civil interdiction. So he, the offender shall be deprived of the following. Uh, parental authority, guardianship, okay? Parental authority, guardianship, marital authority, and the right to what? To manage property as well as the right to dispose of the same. So all you have to do is just memorize the same, with Article 34. Let's go to uh, pecuniary liabilities. So in case the offender shall not be sufficient, uh, sh sh should not be property of the offender, no, shall not be sufficient for the payment of all his debts, then what will be the order of uh, payment? So number one, RIFC. So reparation, in indemnification, fine, and cost. So those are just um, codal provisions. Seldom asked, but uh, since it was not at in the past, it could probably ask uh, this time. So all you have to do is just to memorize this article. Subsidiary penalty. Ano? Uh, ang importante rin lang dito sa subsidiary penalty is this. Dapat, uh, ano, had no property to meet uh, the payment of a fine. No? So, pang ano lang siya. Uh, sa pang fine lang siya at hindi siya mag-a-apply sa ibang pecuniary liabilities. So, alam, uh, mm. just remember this one. Uh, uh, apply is uh, non payment of fine. So, big sabihin, not applicable yan. If he's not able to pay any civil liability. So if maraming bar questions dito, pag sinabi hindi siya nakabayad ng kanyang uh, uh, ng damages or civil liability, pecuniary liabilities, it's not applicable because this is only uh, it only refers to fine, no? And secondly. It should be expressly stated. That in case the convict had failed to pay the fine, then he is required to undergo subsidiary uh, imprisonment for at the rate of what? One, one day equivalent to the highest minimum wage rate no, uh, prevailing in the Philippines at the time of his conviction. So one day equivalent to the uh, highest minimum wage, wage rate prevailing. You know, uh, remember this. So there are questions in, in, in the bar examinations which, uh, in which it was not expressly stated that in case of non-payment of a fine, that they will go uh, undergo a subsidiary imprisonment of one day equivalent to the highest minimum wage rate. Dapat yan naka-express. So sa mga isang ibang bar questions nakalagay, o hindi siya na, he is required to pay a fine, but he, does, he did not uh, pay the fine. Pero silent as to whether it's ex expressly stated or not. If it is silent, then he is not uh, mandated to undergo subsidiary in penalty. Hindi ma, 
hindi mag-apply sa kanyan. Kasi kinalangan, kinakailangan, it should be expressly stated. Why must it be expressly stated? Because this is not an accessory penalty. Remember, in, in, in uh, types of penalties, one could be a principal penalty, one could be a, a accessory penalty. Uh, <clears throat> accessory penalty need not be stated in the decision because it is deemed impliedly instituted. Now, this is not an accessory penalty. Thus, it should be expressly stated. And if it is not expressly stated in the decision, then he is not required to undergo the same. It will not uh, bind him. You know, walang uh, batas na magko-compel him to undergo as such. Okay, uh, let me continue with my screen share. So, tingnan nyo dito. Um, of course, uh, if the just memorize this, if the principal penalty imposed be prison correctional arrest or men, arrest or fine, okay, uh, subsidiary imprisonment is shall not exceed one third of the term of the sentence, and in no case shall it continue for more than one year. Kung fine lang yan, subsidiary imprisonment shall not exceed six months if the culprit shall have been prosecuted for a grave or less grave felonies. And shall not exceed 15 days if for a light fel uh, felony. Tatandaan yun din to is the number three. When the principal penalty imposed is higher than prison correctional, uh, no subsidiary imprisonment shall be uh, imposed upon the culprit. So higher than prison correctional. What's penalty higher than prison correctional? Prison mayor and up. Diba? So, no subsidiary imprisonment shall be applied. Now, remember that. Of course, if there are uh, uh, other, if he's not unable uh, to pay yung subsidiary penalty by reason of insolvency, it shall not uh, relieve him from reparation of the damage caused, nor from indemnification for the conse consequential damage in case his financial circumstances should have improved. Uh, let's analyze this one. Mark question. Mr. Q was found guilty beyond reasonable doubt of the crime of serious physical injuries no, and accordingly was sentenced to suffer the penalty of imprisonment for an indeterminate period of six months of arrest of mayors minimum and up to prison correctional as maximum. He was ordered to pay the victim actual damages in the amount of 50,000 with subsidiary imprisonment in case of insolvency. So was the imposition of subsidiary imprisonment proper Sabi niya, subsidiary imprisonment in case of insolvency. Okay. Ano ang nirequire sa kanya? Payment of fine? Hindi. Ang nakalagay dito is, is to pay a victim actual damages. So, can he be required to undergo subsidiary imprisonment? Of course not. It is not proper. Why? Because it is only applicable to... Uh, if he's unable to meet the fine, diba? And in such doing, uh, in this case, Mr. Q was ordered to pay the victim only with actual damages and not to pay a fine. Hence, subsidiary imprisonment cannot be imposed. So be very careful when analyzing bar problem. No? Sa fine lang ito. Remember, it's only applicable to fine and not in case of insolvency. Tingnan nyo. Almost ganyan din ang tanong. Luis was sentenced to prison mayor and to pay a fine of 50,000 pesos with subsidiary imprisonment in case of insolvency. Is the sentence correct? Of course, the, the question, the, Correct answer is B, because subsidiary imprisonment is only applicable when the penalty 
uh, imposed is prison correctional or below or below the sentence the sen Lewis was sentenced to prison mayor no? prison mayor so sinabi ko kanina huwag niyo kalilimutan yung pangatlo di ba if the principal penalty imposed is higher than prison correctional no subsidiary imprisonment shall be imposed upon the culprit so doon lang naglalaro yung mga tanong diyan now with respect to reclusion perpetua alam niyo na yon no tingnan niyo tinanong sa bar no it is life imp life imprisonment is a penalty more favorable to the convict than uh, reclusion perpetua true or false no of course it's false why because life imprisonment is unfavorable to a convict because the penalty is without fixed duration alam naman natin that the reclusion peri uh, perpetua carries the penalty of 20 years one day to 40 years no it, it, it has a fixed duration of 40 years but in life imprisonment does that have article 45 speaks about for future of the proceeds or instruments of the crime so it st states that every penalty imposed for the commission of a felony shall carry with it for feature of the proceeds of the crime and instruments or tools with which it was committed so pwedeng e e forfeited in favor of the government confiscated no uh, okay ano lang exception no para hindi mo forfeit ang mga tools used in the commission or of the crime or instruments of the crime if the property of, uh, belongs to a third person not liable for the offense so wala siyang kinalaman so hindi siya it will not be forfeited in favor of the government if the property used as an instrument of the crime okay belongs to a third person who is not liable for the offense no of course, like like uh, drugs, no, they are not subject to a lawful commerce, so it shall be destroyed. Well, let's analyze bar problem. Ay, mahaba ito. Sige. Si, tingnan nyo, si Mare, Maita Da was the object of Solito's advice, uh, avid sexual desires. So, uh, the victim is Maita, tapos ang offender is Solito. So, marami tayong... Uh, uh, times he enticed Maita to a date in bed with him but Maita had consistently refused. So fed up with all her rejections Solis, Sol, Solito abducted Maita okay, kinidap niya inabduct niya eh, nilagay niya yung, si Maita sa Toyota Innova and drove off with her to a green painted house situated in a desolated part of the town. There, Solito succeeded in having carnal knowledge of Maita against her will. So another incident. Meanwhile, the police authorities were tipped off that at 11.30 p.m. on the same night, Solito would be selling marijuana outside the green painted house. And acting on the tip, the PNP station of the town formed a by bus team with PO2 Masahol being designated as the pusher buyer. During the buy bus operation, Solito opened the trunk of the Toyota Innova to, to retrieve the bank of marijuana to be sold to PO2 Masahol. Okay? So, ang nangyari, eh, hinuli siya ng PO2 Masahol. No? So, kinunpis ka ni Masahol yung drugs, yung bag, as well as yung Toyota Innova. So of course, definitely dalawang information, criminal information were filed against uh, Solito. One is for forcible abduction with rape uh, and it was design, uh, Arctic, uh, uh, branch 8 of the RTC branch 8 no, handled that case, heard that case, while in so far as illegal sale of drugs, it was assigned to another RTC, which is uh, Branch uh, 29. Uh, now, 
while the prosecution was presenting its evidence in branch branch eight in branch twenty nine, branch eight kung saan siya uh, charged ng ano ng uh, rape abduction with rape, no? Ah, uh, nagkaroon na nagrender na ng judgment. Okay? So ang ginawa ni ano ni Solito, nag-file siya sa in both branches, sa branch 8 at 29 ng motion for the release of Toyota Innova. So tandaan niyo yung sa branch 20 sa 8 is dun sa abduction with rape at branch 29 ay yung uh, possession ano uh, involving drugs case, no? He argued and proved that he had only borrowed the vehicle from his brother, the registered owner. Branch 8 granted the motion. Branch 29 denied the same. Were the two courts correct in ruling? In their ruling? Tandaan nyo, sa branch 8, na-convict na siya. Sa branch 29, sa drugs, no, uh, it's still being heard of. So, ta ang tanong is... Uh, were the two courts correct in their ruling? The answer is yes. The ruling of the two courts were correct. Why? Article 45. This is the, uh, ano, the legal basis. That every penalty imposed for the commission of the felony shall include the forfeiture of the instruments or, instru or tools with which the crime was committed unless they be property of a third person not liable for the offense. So, so yun, yun ang ating legal basis. And then we have the application. In this case, uh, RTC Branch 8 already convicted of Solito of the crime of forcible abduction with rape. No? In the hearing, he was able to prove that he only borrowed the vehicle from his brother na hindi naman niya nga involved sa crime. So consequently, the order of the said court to release the Toyota Innova vehicle to his brother is correct. With respect to naman sa branch 8, um, uh, it is only but proper for that branch 8 to deny the motion to release the said vehicle. Bakit? Because yung trial for illegal sale of drugs is still pending. It is still being heard of. So the issue as to whether to cancel or forfeit an instrument can only be made once there is a judgment rendered and where a penalty is meted out by the court. Na? So ito still being heard of no? to release the subject uh, Toyota Innova vehicle is still premature. Now let's go to penalties. Uh, Let's go to complex crime. Two kinds of complex crime is ex uh, they are found in Article 48. So number one, when a single act constitutes two or more grave or less grave felonies. Number two, when offense is a necessary means to commit another. So the first type would be what? When a single act constitutes two or more crimes, it will refer to a complex crime, compound complex crime. Tapos, second type ng complex crime, when an offense is a necessary means to com commit another. That is complex crime proper. Pag necessary means yan, it's a complex crime proper. But when a single act constitutes two or more, uh, two or more grave, kulang ito, grave or less grave felonies, then it's a compound complex crime. So under Article 48, there are two types of complex crime. When a single act constitutes two or more grave or less grave uh, felonies, the other one is when it is a necessary means to commit another.
let me further this further discuss this one compound class you listen because this is usually as in the bar compound complex crime single up but is equal or constitutes what? Two or more grave or less grave felonies. So, ang, ang tanong, no? single act constitutes what? Two or more grave or less grave felons. Ang, ang tanong dito, um, does it follow that just because that single act constitutes two or more crimes, it, it, we can immediately conclude that it is a compound complex crime? No. Why? Because the other those two crimes must be classified as a grave felony or a less grave felony. Hence, if it is a light felony, hindi siya magka-complex crime. Ano bang grave? No? Capital or afflictive penalties ang uh, uh, imposed dyan. Pag less grave, no, it will be correctional. At pagka sinabi correctional, o prison correctional, including arresto mayor, no? Suspension or disturb. No. So in other words, this is not applicable where the penalty no, NA2 not applicable in the following. Other crime is a light felony. So hindi mag-apply pag light felony or light felony sila. If the time penalty is one day, to 30 days lang ang penalty, walang complex crime. Kahit dalawang crimes ang kinumit niya, uh, ang nagproduce niya. Okay? Now, secondly, it is not applicable also with the other penalty as is a special penal loss. Remember, limbawa, murder with complex with uh, illegal possession of firearms. Tama, mali. Mali. Why? Because it's an SPL. No, com complex crime, the concept of uh, complex crime under Article 48 is only applicable to crime Spanish under the revised penal code. Now, kung mga ano yan, uh, special penal laws, hindi pe pwede. So, kung i-penalize uh, mong uh, bawa, it's a it's a complex crime of direct bribery with the uh, complex with the anti graft and corrupt practices act mali no uh, direct assault with illegal possession of firearms as a complex crime mali because the other crime is a special penal law next it is also not applicable if the other crime uh, is used to conceal the commission of the other crime is to conceal the commission of a previous crime. A killed B. Pinatanya si B. No? So ang ginawa niya is to hide the fact that he murdered B. Ang ginawa niya is to burn the house of B. Andun si B nag-commit siya ng arson. Is that a complex crime? Is, is that a compound complex crime? No, it's not. Because, no, it is used to conceal a previous crime committed. Okay? So, remember that. So, what could possibly be examples of uh, compound complex crime? A, through a hand grenade. 
to kill B. Okay. A by, there's also C, a bystander. So he threw a hand grenade with intent to uh, killing B. Uh, patay si B. Si C, bystander, patay din. Uh, is, the, is there a compound complex crime? Yes, because it constitutes the, the, a single act that produced uh, two grave felonies. Uh, patay si B, patay si C. Okay, that's the first scenario. Number two is patay si B, uh, rest in peace si B. Si C naman, a bystander, only suffered slight physical injury. So na may galos lang si C. Ang duration niya lang ng ano niya is one, one day na medical treatment. Is there a compound complex crime? Wala. Because one is a grave felony, the other one is only a light felony. O, tandaan niyan. Eh, sir, pangatlo, paano kung meron si B? Patay si B. Patay si C. Bystander suffered slight physical injury, si D. Will there be a complex crime? Yes. It will already satisfy the requirement of the law which is what? Two or more grave or less grave felonies. So the, the death of B and the death of C would already fall uh, on a complex crime, regardless of whether there is still a bystander who suffered or not. Okay? So yun ang ibig sabi ng compound complex crime. Now again, remember, not applicable if the other is a light felony. Not applicable if it is the other, uh, if it is complex with the SPL, and not applicable if it is to conceal the commission of a previous crime. Now let's go to other type of a compound of complex crime, which is what a uh, second uh, complex crime proper when it is a remember this this is the magic word necessary means to commit another so there are two crimes committed right the other crime is a necessary means to commit another now we talk about the concept of uh, necessary means. Tandaan nyo, necessary means is not an indispensable. Not indispensable means to commit another crime. Dapat necessary means lang siya. Pagka indispensable means, then it is not a complex crime proper. Uh, Let's analyze this one. A person is charged of the crime of... Uh, is there a crime of estafa? No. Uh, through... Estafa through falsification. of a private document tinatanong sa bar to pagtanong is there a crime of estafa through falsification of a private document second is there also an estafa through falsification of a public document And this was asked several times in the bar, so listen carefully. Is there a crime of estafa through issuance of a falsification of a private document? Second, is there also a estafa through falsification of a public document? Okay. 
Now, titingnan natin ngayon yung mga elements nila. When you talk about estafa, necessary means to commit uh, ang tanong yan. Necessary means is falsification of a private document necessary to commence the crime of estafa. Is falsification of a public document necessary to commit the crime of estafa, of estafa as well? Estafa, no, essential ingredient is damage. Falsification of a, what's the difference between falsification of a private document from falsification of a public document? Anyone can remember? No, so falsification of a private document, kinakailangan ng damage. So, so staff at falsification of a public document, damage is not an element. Hindi siya element. Ito element. Now, I emphasized a while ago. Why? Why? Why is, why, why is it that damage is not an element of public document? Because it's because of the sanctity of a public document. No, it's easier to prove falsification of a public document. Why? Only you only have to prove falsification, the act of falsifying, and the, the 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 document falsified is a public document. Whereas in falsification of a private document, you have to prove number one is the act of falsification. Number two, it's that. Uh, the document involves private document. Number three, you prove damage. Now, why is it that damage is not an element in falsification of a public document? Because of, as I mentioned earlier, you know, it's because of the respect due to a public document. So it's, it's easier to prove a falsification of a public document. Now, since in uh, falsification of a private document, damage is not only a necessary means to commit estafa, but it is an indispensable means. Ergo, there is no uh, complex crime of estafa through falsification of a private document. Damage in, in falsification of a private document is an indispensable means to commit this crime. While in falsification of a public document, damage is not an element. And ergo, there could be a staff through falsification of a public document. There is no staff through esta falsification of a private document damage being an essential indispensable element of the crime e ang complex crime mag apply lang yan sa necessary means to commit another now what is the penalty in so far as complex crime is concerned penalty in complex crime The law provides that, what will be the penalty? It should be in a most serious crime because there are two crimes committed. So they determine more which one between the two is the most serious crime and impose it in to its maximum period, regardless of any ordinary mitigating circumstances. So this is under Article 48. Ang sinasabi ng batas. Alimbawa, example would be, uh, let's think of a crime. Direct assault complex with murder. X was uh, charged and convicted of the crime of direct assault, complex with murder. What will be the penalty applying the complex uh, Article 48? What will be the 
penalty that should be imposed. Which one carries, uh, which one is the most serious crime? Direct assault or murder? Alumbawa, si uh, Barangay Captain. Si Barangay Captain ay person in authority. Oh. So, um, kasi nagkaroon sila ng existing grudge because uh, he was apprehended before by the Barangay Captain. So gusto niyang maghiganti kay Barangay Captain. So he thought of committing a crime and he murdered Barangay Captain while si, si Chairman ay nasa Barangay Hall no? with treachery. So naturally complex crime kasi uh, may treachery, murder. And at the same time, he's a person in authority and he was uh, attacked and killed and murdered by reason of his uh, being a person in authority, then direct assault is likewise committed. So it's direct assault complex with murder. Which one carries the pen most severe serious crime? Murder. Diba? As compared with that of ano, a direct assault and murder, it's murder. So the penalty for murder will be imposed and impose it in its maximum period. Oh, ano ba yung, this is what we call as a special is as a ano, um, special aggravating circumstance which cannot be offset by any ordinary mitigating circumstance. So tatanda nyo, pag masyadong malalim sa bar question, limbawa, titingnan mo if he was convicted of a complex crime, no, and then nagtitingin ka, oh, may mga mitigating, may aggravating. No? So may mga ordinary mitigating na present. Pero complex crime yun. Will you appreciate the same? No. Because sabi ng batas, always impose it in its maximum period regardless of the presence of other modifying circumstances. Halimbawa, if it is reclusion, per, uh, reclusion temporal, uh, impose it in its maximum period. Regardless of the presence of ordinary mitigating. O sir, paano ko may privilege mitigating? 17 years of age acting with discernment. Okay? Baba ka ng isa. Privilege mitigating yun eh. Hindi naman na uh, ordinary mitigating. Eh. Diba? Sinabi ko sa inyo, if if there is a privilege mitigating, babakan by degree. So from reclusion temporal, lower it by to prison mayor. But impose this in its maximum period without regard to the presence of ordinary mitigating circumstances, if in case meron. So yun lang ang medyo lalim dyan. Okay. Let's go to a different uh, topic. Continue. Now, there was a problem in so far as Article 48 is concerned. So, yung uh, ginamit yung fully automatic uh, sub-machine gun. Maraming namatay. No? Four persons were killed. Uh, each having a hit by different bullets uh, coming from submachine, the submachine gun of the offender. No? So, apat ang namatay. Sabi niya, oh, ano lang, there is only the single act of pressing the gun. Dapat ito, ang penalty nito ay complex crime. Sabi ng ano, uh, the decision of the trial court is not correct because the use of auto alam niyo naman to no napag-aralan niyo to in so far as automatic gun is concerned no it is not the act of pressing the trigger which should produce the several penalties but the number of bullets which actually produce them it's not the the act of pressing but the output the outcome the number of bullets which actually produce them thus when a 
with the use of a fully automatic uh, M14 uh, submachine gun, shot a group of persons with just one burst of successive continuous automatic fire. There are as many crimes as are persons killed. So in this case, consequently, A is criminally liable for four cases of murder. Uh, Article 49 just uh, speaks about uh, when, the pen of, when the crime is different from that which is intended. Ibig sabihin, ito ay preter intentionem. Pag may preter intentionem, the intent uh, uh, is less than that of the, uh, uh, the, the crime actually produced. No? What is the penalty to be imposed? Kino, alam natin, ang preter pre intentionem is a mitigating circumstance. No? Lack of intent to commit so grave a wrong. So if the penalty prescribed for the felony committed be higher than the corresponding, than that corresponding to the offense which the accused intended to commit. Oh, kung mas mababa ang penalty doon sa intended to be committed niya, then the penalty corresponding to the latter shall be imposed. No, since it's it's favorable to the accused, it's less than no, mas mababa doon sa penalty for prescribed for the penal for the felony. But impose it in its maximum period. Now, kung ang penalty naman prescribed for the felony is lower than that which he actually intended. Then doon ka sa mababa. The penalty for the former shall be imposed. Now, this rule shall not be applicable kung merong specific penalty imposed upon the attempted or frustrated felony. Merong ganyan. No, pag sinabing frustrated lang, ito ang penalty. Hindi mo na-apply ito. May mga special penal laws na may mga attempted or frustrated. Pero may specific penalty sila pinoprovide. So disregard this rule already. If there is a specific penalty provided by ELDO, no, a higher penalty for either of the latter offenses. Now, article, Articles 50 to 51, we discussed this already. Ito yung lang yung uh, yung summary. No? Kung siya ay uh, consummated, frustrated, attempted. So, kung principal, accomplices, accessories, let's just go back to our discussion before. No, the penalty imposed uh, is the, the, the penalty is deemed imposed upon a principal on a consummated stage. So that if it is uh, 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 performed committed by an accomplice in a consummated stage it's it's one degree lower than that imposed upon a principal on a consummated stage if committed by an accessory it's two degrees lower than that imposed upon a principal on a consummated stage if it is uh, frustrated then it's one degree lower than that imposed upon a principal on a consummated stage if it is committed by an attempted it's two degrees lower so you know, uh, yung Articles 50 to 57, no? these are the basis of this lecture. Sinamarize lang din natin yun. Let's go back. Uh, impossible crime. Article 59. Anong penalty sa impossible crime? Meron. No? Penalty is arresto mayor or fine ranging from 200 to 500. No? Successive service of sentence. 
uh, threefold rule where the culprit has to serve two or more penalties, he shall, sell, he shall serve them simultaneously if the nature of the penalties will so permit. No? Kung hindi man, then in the imposition of the penalties, the order of the respective severity shall be followed that they may be executed successively or as nearly as may be possible. So this is the order. Uh, importante dito is ito. This is what we call as uh, the threefold rule. Notwithstanding the provisions of the rule next preceding the maximum duration of the convict sentence shall not be what? More than threefold the length of time corresponding to what? Hindi siya higit ng more than threefold the length of time corresponding doon sa pinaka most severe penalties imposed upon him. No other penalty to which he may be liable shall be inflicted after the sum total of this imposed equals the same the said maximum period. And such maximum period shall in no case exceed 40 years. So anong tatandaan nyo lang dito sa threefold rule? Threefold rule. Requisites lang. There must be at least four penalties. Pag three penalties lang ang nakita nyo dyan, ah, do not apply. And what is the maximum duration of the sentence? Ang maximum duration of the sentence shall not be more than three times the most severe penalty. Okay, remember that. Okay, let, let me just give you an example. Uh, uh, kung ang penalty niya, sabi natin, there must be at least uh, apat, no? One, two, three, four. So ang penalty niya is four years, uh, five, five, and seven. Uh, na natin, hindi na siguro ang 4. Gawin na lang din natin ng... Uh, uh, wait, wait. Uh, Ando natin. Gawin natin ng 5, 6, 6, 7. Ang penalties niya. 5 years, 6 years. 6 years again and 7 years. Okay? Let's add this up. No, this will be 12, uh, 17, plus 7, 24. I hope tama addition ko. If you add that up, it's 24. Correct? Okay. Uh, 13 plus 11. Okay. 24 siya. Now, Sabi daw, it's more, not more than three times the most severe penalty. So between among five, six, six, seven, which is the most severe, it's seven. Multiply this by two, by three, it will be 21. Uh, as compared sa 24 sa 21, mas mababa ang 21. So it shall not exceed yung 21, hindi 24. Ba? So favorable yan sa ano sa akusado, sa convict. Kung mas mataas ito kesa dito, eh, hindi na natin na-apply. Doon tayo sa mababa. Alimbawa, penalty is 2, 2, 2, 7. O, anong total nito? 6, uh, 13, times 20, uh, 3, 21. So, ano mas mababa? Ang, ang sum. So, hindi na natin apply yung threefold rule. Apply lang natin yan kung favorable. Just like in this case, no, if you multiply this, 
It's 21 years compared with 24. Ito ang i-impose natin. I-apply natin. Not more than the same. Okay, let's continue. Of course, we know that uh, in so far as a death penalty is concerned, no? Artic uh, Article uh, Republic Act 9346 renders the execution of the penalty of death no, inoperative, just like that of Articles 81 to 85. So, wala tayong death penalty. Just here, oh, memorize this one. No? Just memorize, baka tanongin eh. Shall, ng uh, basic shall not be permitted to enter the place or places designated in the sentence, nor within the radius of what? 25, no? Shall not be more than 250 and not less than 25 kilometers from the place designated. So, kakalimutan nyo lang. Is yung, huwag nyo kakalimutan yung 25. Not less than 25, no? But not more than 250 kilometers from the place designated. Kailan? In the impose on the stereo. Remember that the stereo is imposed uh, when un death under exceptional circumstances under Article 247. Or the penalty for concubine no, under Article 334. Or failure to give bond for good behavior no, under Article 248. And when lowering the penalty, the stereo is the proper remedy. Okay. So we finish with penalties already. Let's go to Title IV. Uh, extinction of criminal and civil liability resulting from a crime. No, extinction. Pag tinanong, no, uh, how is criminal liability extinguished? Do not state that criminally, uh, criminal liability is extinguished by death, uh, service of sentence. Not yet first. No? Uh, pag sinanong how is criminal liability extinguished, it's a, it, it can be extinguished with a total extinction or partial extinction of criminal liability. And under, under total extinction, we have the following. Yun. So, ang una-una is what? <clears throat> so, total extinction is what? Death, service of sentence, no? Uh, amnesty, absolute pardon, prescription of a crime, prescription of the penalty, and marriage. So, yun yun. Let's go to death. Pagka naman tayong tao, no? wala na siyang criminal liability. Of course, paano mo pakukulong siya dan, di ba? What about civil liability? No? It is only extinguished when the death of the offender occurs before final judgment. Sa pecuniary liabilities yun, ha? Okay. Doon sa personal liabilities, dead ball na siya. Okay? Criminal liability is, is extinguished. Civil liability, when death occurs before final judgment, then it's extinguished. But if that occurs after final judgment, then it's not. Hmm. Ito, sina... It is a settled principle that the death of the convict, whether before or after final judgment, extinguishes criminal liability. Walang problema sa criminal. But it's so far as... Pecuniary liabilities, civil liability is extinguished only when death occurs before final judgment. Hence, if the offender dies after final judgment, the pecuniary penalties are not extinguished, so they are liable. No. Applying the principle to the facts of the case, uh, since uh, the Bushel died after the CA had already issued an entry of judgment, which means the decision has already become final and executory. So, okay. His civil liability is not extinguished, but it survives as his death occurs after final judgment. 
Oh, ito, giveaway na yung tanong. Assuming that Tiburcio's death occurred before the CA rendered its decision, will you give a different answer? Of course, no? The RTC decision must be set aside against Tiburcio. Uh, it, applying the principle, Tibur, Tiburcio's death before the CA had rendered its decision will extinguish not only his criminal but his civil liability as well. Civil liability that is based on delict. Well, exception is that the claim for civil liability sur survives that withstanding the death of the accused if the same may also be predicated on a source of obligation other than delict. Law contracts, quasi-contracts, and quasi-delicts. At ibig sabihin, di ba? Kung namatay siya before final judgment, Extinguish ang criminal liability, extinguish ang civil liability. But what, what, yung civil liability that we are referring to here refers to civil liability arising from delict or civil liability arising from a crime. But if the civil liability no, is predicated on contracts or quasi-contracts, no? or delic, quasi delics then hindi mag apply Ang mag-extinguish, ang type ng civil liability, mag-extinguish lang if the de death occurs prior to final judgment refers to civil liability arising from delic. Okay? Second way of total uh, extinction of criminal liability is by service of sentence. Third is by amnesty. So, ang tinatanong yan is amnesty, amnesty from absolute pardon. You distinguish between the two. Uh, in amnesty, the law looks backward. No, it totally extinguishes not only criminal liability, but everything. No, uh, including its effects. No, pag absolute, pag pardon, no, uh, pag amnesty, it can be given even prior to conviction. Sa, sa pardon, binibigay yan if, after conviction. Okay? And in amnesty, um, uh, judicial, the, the court can may take judicial notice of the fact that amnesty was extended. So, noong unang panahon ng mga 89 kudita, so pinardo ni President Ramos yung mga nag-involve sa kudita, even no, wala pang uh, conviction, wala pang charge sa kanila. So, pwede yun. So, if it is uh, amnesty, the amnesty looks backward and abolishes and puts into oblivion the offense itself. No, so it so overlooks and obliterates the offense with which he is charged. That the person released by amnesty stands before the law precisely as though he had committed no offense. Okay. So Article 89 provides that amnesty completely extinguishes the penalty and all its effects. So in this case, Amnesty erase the crime of rebellion that Antero committed and its legal effects. So, the crime of evasion of service for which he was convicted we was an offshoot of the crime of rebellion na extinguished na. Huh? So, uh, effect is that amnesty obliterates not only the basis of conviction but also the legal effects thereof. Now let's go to absolute pardon. Okay, that's a way, another way of uh, total extinction of criminal liability. We refer to this to Article Thirty Six of the RPC. Article Thirty Six speaks about pardon shall not work the restoration of the right to hold public office or the right of suffrage unless such right be expressly restored by the terms of the pardon. Pag hindi sinasabi, no, it shall not be restored. A pardon shall in no case exempt the culprit also from the payment of civil indemnity. 
So, noong 2015, lumabas sa bar. So, si, si, si Senator Adamos was convicted of plunder. About one year after beginning to serve his sentence, the President of the Philippines granted him absolute pardon. The signed pardon states, in view hereof and in pursuance of the authority vested upon me by the Constitution, I hereby grant absolute pardon unto Adamos, uh, who was convicted of plunder and upon whom the penalty of reclusion perpetua was imposed. Quote and unquote. Yun ang nakalagay. Now, he comes to youth for advice. Magkakaroon ng election, katulad next year. Di ba? He wants to know if he could run for the senator next election. What advice will you give Adamos? Unfortunately, no, if I were his counsel, I, I, I will give him the advice that he cannot run in the senatorial race no, while pardon looks forward and relieves the offender from the consequences of an offense which he had convicted. Kaya lang, Article 36, very specific. No? Although sinasabi sa, uh, sa, sa principle on pardon, it will relieve him from all the consequences of his offense. However, ang Article 36 is very specific that a pardon shall not work the restoration of the right to hold public office. Unless it nakalagay expressly restored dun sa terms ng kanyang pardon. Further, Article 41 states that penalty of reclusion perpetual shall carry with it per perpetual absolute disqualification which the offender shall suffer even though pardon as to the principal. Now, in this case, since the terms of the pardon extended by the president have not expressly restored Adamo's right to hold public office. Nakalagay naman dito, di ba? Wala dito na sinasabing nire-restore yung kanyang right to hold public office. Ergo, hindi siya makakaran sa senatorial race. Assuming that what Adamo's committed was heading a rebellion for which he was imposed the same penalty of reclusion perpetua and what he received was amnesty o iba na to amnesty pag sa amnesty di ba sabi natin it is as if he did not commit a crime no amnesty is uh, uh, applicable to political offenses no rebellion is a political offense amnesty is extended to senator adamos which is proper no Amnesty looks backward and abolishes and puts into oblivion the offense itself. It overlooks and obliterates offense for which he is charged. So, uh, mare-restore yun. No? Because before the law, uh, it is as though he had committed no offense. Let's go to prescription of the crime. Prescription of the crime, memorize this one. Pag death, reclusion perpetua, reclusion temporal, 20 years. Other afflictive penalties, 15 years. No, uh, Correctional penalties, 10 years. Pag arresto, mayor, 5 years ang prescriptive period. Libel, shall prescribe in one year. Oral defamation and slander, 6 months. Light offenses, in 2 months. Okay, memorize that. Of course, prescription of a crime is different from prescription of a penalty. And prescription of the crime is inability of the state to prosecute the crime. Prescription of the penalty is inability of the state to execute no, the penalty imposed. Let's go to a uh, computation of ano, a crime. Uh, prescription of on the discovery by the offended party 
the authorities or agents and shall be interrupted by the filing of the a complaint or information and shall commence to run again when such proceedings terminate without the accused being convicted or acquitted or are unjustifiably stopped for any reason not imputable to him. No. The term of reception shall not run when the offender is absent from the Philippine archipelago. Uh, ganto na lang. It's better that I uh, illustrate this by way of uh, whiteboard. <clears throat> A killed A and B, alimbawa, nagkaroon ng altercation sa isang sari-sari store. Maraming tao nakakita. So A killed B. Kailan uh, magradan yung prescription? The prescription shall run on the day the crime was committed. No? So general rule is the crime <clears throat> when the crime was committed. Wala namang problema. Thus, on that same day, no, nung pinatay ni ACB, dumating ang mga polis, hinuli siya. So, it is on the day uh, when the crime was committed. Now, let's go to a scenario when it is when the crime is concealed or when it is not known. Talimbawa sa isang uh, bundok, no? sa isang uh, malayong lugar na nandun lang si A at si B. A killed B. No witnesses. A ran away. It, it killed B on perhaps June 1, no? 20, uh, 2015. B, C is uh, nakita ni C yung uh, br uh, remains D, B on June 1, 2016, the following year. <clears throat> Sino si C? Uh, kapitbahay lang yan. Malayong kapitbahay. C relate the same to... Uh, D to W on when was it uh, made known? Two years after the incident. Sinabi ni si, doon niya lang nakilala si W na wife BB. Uy, nakita ko yung bangkay ng asawa mo, blah, blah, blah. And that, doon sa lugar na yun. O, ang tanong is, when should we count the period of prescription? Is it on June 1st, 2015, June 1, 2016, when C saw the remains of B, or on June 1st, 2017, when it was related to uh, W, the wife of B? Now, since it is not known, it is uh, concealed, no? So it will, nakalagay do, it shall. Uh, Prescriptive children at the time of discovery. Very material yung the term ng discovery. Lumalabas sa Barton. And discovered by whom? By the offended party. Or only by a person in authority or an agent of a person in authority. So, shall we count it on, uh, of course, wala na to on the date of this COVID, uh, the, the crime was committed since it's it's concealed, that no? Will we count it on C? When, on, Ju when, on June 1st, 2016, when C discovered the remains of B? No, because he is not an offended party, he is not a person in authority or an agent of a person in authority. Will it be counted? Uh, when on the date that C relate the same to W on June 1st, 2017, yes, 
because W is the offended part. When you talk about offended party, you're referring to the relatives of B. So if it was discovered by the relatives of B, such as in this case, W, his wife, then it shall be reckoned on June 1st, 2017. Or kung nirelay sa mga police, then it will be on the date that it was related to an agent of a person in authority. Okay, remember that. Yeah, lapit na tayo matapos. So, uh, just memorize prescription of the penalties. Codal uh, na lang yan. Okay. Let's go to extinction of uh, uh, crime. Of course, number seven is by the marriage of the offended party, of by marriage of the offended woman, based on Article 344. That's the last instance in a total extinction of criminal liability. Now, let's go to partial extinction of criminal liability. So it could be a conditional pardon or by commutation of the sentence or the lowering of the uh, sentence uh, by the chief executive. Of course, we have good conduct allowances which the culprit may earn while he is undergoing preventive imprisonment or serving his sentence in good behavior. Okay, every person under Article Civil, let's go to Title 5, Civil Liability, every person criminally liable is also civilly liable. Every person criminally liable for a felony is also civilly liable. Uh, sinabi dito, say, uh, bar problem, the accused was found guilty of 10 counts of rape. Grabe, no? For having carnal knowledge with the same woman. In addition, the penalty of imprisonment. No, he was uh, he was ordered to pay indemnity in the amount of fifty thousand for each count. So ten counts of alahating million at that time. So on appeal, can question niya yon. The accused questions the award of civil uh, indemnity for each count, considering that the victim is the same woman. Isang Isang biktima lang yan eh. At isang tao do sa rate eh. Dapat isa lang liability yan. Na 50,000. So how would you rule on the contention of the accused? The contention is brief of any merit. Bakit? Immaterial kung ang victim was rape na narape is yung isang woman. Isang uh, biktima. Kasi... Article 100 of the RPC expressly provides that every person criminally liable is also civilly liable. The civil indemnity mandated by law arises out of ex delicto. And since there are uh, findings of 10 separate uh, counts of rape, it necessarily follows that there should be 10 separate imposition of civil indemnity. Article 102. Memorize this one. Subsidiary li uh, liability of uh, innkeepers, tavern keepers, and proprietors of establishment. What does it, the law provide? In default of the person's criminal liable, innkeeper, tavern keeper, or any person or corporation shall be civilly liable for crimes committed within their establishments. No? Kaya lang, may mga, may mga ano yan, condition. And remember those conditions. Okay. Allow me to annotate. No? Innkeepers are subsidiary liable for goods taken by robbery or, uh, or theft within their houses from guests or from the payment of value thereon, provided. No, liable kami. Sige, sabi ng e-caper. So pumunta ka sa isang hotel. No? In, uh, tapos nagkaroon ng uh, crime committed. Liable kami, pero sabi niya, the guest shall, number one, 
uh, notified in advance the innkeeper itself or the person representing him of the deposits of such good within the inn. Pangalawa, should have followed the directions which such innkeeper or his representative may have given with respect to the care and diligence over such goods. So there are directions that dapat pinalong niya. Number three, no, tandaan niyo to, no liability shall attach in robbery with violence or against intimidation of persons. So pag ang pumasok, ang crime committed is robbery at hindi theft, at violence against or intimidation of persons, no, not liable. Unless ginawa ng innkeeper's uh, employer. And how do we apply this one? Okay, nasa in ngayon si X. So, ang owner is si A. Si A may mga waiter siya. Okay. Waiter 1, waiter 2. No? Pagka ang ginawa ni waiter 1 at uh, waiter 2 at meron ding uh, pumasok sa bahay ni asa uh, sa hotel nila ay si isang tao na si F. Foreigner, stranger. Si S na lang, stranger. Dine strong ka, destroyed the the door. Forcibly open and no. <clears throat> poke a gun on X to give him all his uh <clears throat> yung kanyang mga ano, personal belongings. And he took the watches of X as well as the necklaces, no. And he S went out. Would X would would A be criminally liable? What was the crime committed? The crime committed is robbery, no. With violence or intimidation, tinatukan siya ng barrel, di ba? And who committed the same? It is S, a stranger, not an employee. So ergo. This will be applicable. No liability shall attach in case of robbery with violence against or intimidation of persons. So A will not be subsidiary liable because the crime was committed with robbery, violence, or intimidation. It is committed by stranger. Now, if it is committed by W1 and W2, sila ang nagtutok dyan, KX, no? A would be liable because it will fall under the exception unless committed by the innkeeper's uh, employees. Now, ang, kung ang ginawa ni S is, okay, si X nagsiswimming. Nakalak yung door. Destroyed the door and took all the personal belongings of X while X was swimming and went out. Okay, what what crime was committed by S? It's robbery, but what kind of robbery? No, it's robbery with force upon things, and it is not robbery with violence. Now, if it is robbery with force upon things, then uh, innkeepers are subsidiarily liable for restitution by robbery. Well, robbery here we're talking about robbery with force upon things. Okay, uh, of course. Provided that all of the elements indicated in are all present. Subsidiary liability of other persons, the subsidiary liability established in the next proceeding article shall also apply to employers, teachers, persons, or corporations engaged in any kind of industry for felonies committed by their servants, pupils, workmen, apprentices, employees in the discharge of their duties. So, ito si Guy. No? Driver siya ng passenger ship. Sino may ari? Si Max. Si Guy, while driving his, the passenger jeepney owned by operator, ang operator niya ay si Max, eh nakasagasa or eh nakabump ng pedestrian crossing the street si Demi yun 
So si Demi nagsustain ng mga injuries, no? So nag-charge ngayon si Guy, yung driver ng reckless imprudence resulting to physical injuries. Convicted siya, no? And uh, meron siyang imprisonment and ordered to indemnify uh, the victim with in this sum of money. No, naging final ang decision, nagkaroon ng writ of execution upon the driver and syempre mahina, mahirap lang 'yon. Unsatisfied that back then ko 1998 to, the ang laki ng uh, 5,000. No? Ang 5,000 malaking pera na that time. Now, ang sabi ni uh, ni Demi ang ginawa niya since hindi siya maka-recover kay Guy. So, subsidiary move for a subsidiary rate of execution against Max the operator. So, uh, predict predictably, umalag si Max. Teka muna, ang sabi niya, wala naman nakalagay sa decision na subsidiary liable ako. No, eh, hindi naman ako implicated sa kaso. So, dapat hindi ako kasama diyan. The latter opposed the motion on the ground the decision made no mention of his subsidiary liability and that he was uh, not even implicated in the case. How will you resolve the motion? Okay. Kaya grant ko yung uh, motion ng victim, si Demi, for a subsidiary writ of execution against the Max. In which, in which case, no, i-deny ko yung uh, uh, I will well, I will uh, grant the motion okay, of uh, Demi. And the argument raised by Max holds no water. Why? Because Article 103 is clear on the matter. Subsidiary liability shall also apply to employers no uh, and since uh, guy is insolvent no uh, he is in guy ano niya, employee niya yon engage in the transportation business no so considering all the elements the max the employer in the transportation business is subsidiary liable under article 103 so without need of being implicated in the suit. Ibig sabihin, automatic na yun. Okay? Last. What is included in civil liability? Restitution, reparation, indemnification. Memorize dyan. Pag sinabing restitution, ano ibig sabi sabihin? Ire, ano mo? Uh, restitution of the thing itself must be made. So, alimbawa, uh, snatcher, Ang victim, si X, ang biktima niya sa ICA, inisnatch niya yung uh, necklace. Nahuli ngayon si X. So, anong dapat gawin? Ibalik dapat ni X yung necklace. Ba? The thing itself must be restored. Oh, even though it be found in the possession of the part, uh, third party who has acquired it by lawful means. So, alimbawa, binenta ni X ito kay Y. Eh, nakita, uy, yun ang necklace ko. Eh, kunin mo yung, pwedeng kunin yung necklace. Ibalik doon sa may-ari. No? Bahala ni si Y against X. But the thing itself must be restored to the victim. No? Now, kung hindi possible, hindi na makita yung necklace, no? so, dapat may reparation. Bayaran niya. Ano bang value nitong uh, necklace na to? The court shall determine the amount of damage. Ilang karats yan na, na gold? No? Taking in consideration of the price of the thing. Magkano yan? And whenever possible, meron pang ito. It's special sentimental value to the injured party. Minana niya to sa lolo ng lolo ng lolo niya. Di ba? Yung panahon pa ng Kastila. So, special sentimental value to the injured party. Kinonsider yan. <clears throat> now, huwag niyo kalilimutan. Kasi ibang students, ilagay, mental value of the injured. Hindi mental value. Sentimental value. Okay? So, indemnification, 
uh, indemnification for consequential damage shall include not only those costs the injured party, but also the will suffered by his family or by a third person by reason of the crime. Okay. So in that, uh, I stop my lecture. <laughs>